We've had no confirmation yet either that uh, Wally Shira and uh, Jim Lovell and Tom Stafford, Air Force, Lovell and Shira stayed in the Navy. Uh, they're all now astronauts. Uh, Shira, the one of the original Mercury 7 astronauts, the other three in that second class of astronauts that came in shortly uh, thereafter. And now all three of them space veterans, particularly Borman and Lovell, these two 35-year-old pilots who have set every space endurance record with their flight of Gemini 7 and seem to be uh, standing up very well indeed. They uh, said the other day that, uh, in fact, just uh, yesterday, that uh, they were getting a, uh, indicated, they were getting a little bit uh, tired up there. They said they were getting crummy and itchy uh, after not having been able to shave or bathe for some 11 days. And incidentally, they're now a half hour, 33 minutes precisely, into their 12th day of flight. They'll be coming back to Earth on Saturday morning. Now the rendezvous has been achieved so successfully, it is expected that Gemini 6 will come back tomorrow morning at 10.26 uh, a.m. for Sp uh, after not having been able to shave or bathe for some 11 days. And incidentally, they're now a half hour, 33 minutes precisely, into their 12th day of flight. They'll be coming back to Earth on Saturday morning. Now the rendezvous has been achieved so successfully, it is expected that Gemini 6 will come back tomorrow morning at 10.26 uh, a.m. for splashdown time. CBS News color coverage of Gemini 6 and Gemini 7 will continue in a moment. If you're in business in a lot of different countries and you're insured in each one of them, you may have to deal with all these insurance agents. But if you're in business overseas and you're insured with Continental, the only one you have to deal with is the same one you always deal with, your local Continental insurance agent. And you know how to deal with him. Walter Cronkite back at our CBS News Space Center in New York, where we just reported uh, the successful rendezvous of Gemini 6 and 7. Wally Shira and uh, Tom Stafford bringing uh, Gemini 6 up within six feet of Gemini 7, flying around there, looking right into the cockpit windows of Gemini 7. And Gemini 7, those uh, bearded uh, astronauts who took off a week ago Saturday from Cape Kennedy, staring right back at them, and presumably with a great big smile. Shiraz got up there, or I think it was Lovell that took aboard a large uh, uh, Annapolis brigade of midshipman flag, and he may be waving it uh, in his window right now, as far as we know, at uh, Frank Borman, the uh, only West Point graduate of the four service academy men up there. We said a minute ago that we don't get live television coverage of these exciting moments at Mission Control for reasons uh, best considered by the Manned Space Center and NASA program, but they do uh, let us tape uh, these uh, uh, top uh, moments at Mission Control in Houston. They have done that again, and we are going to be permitted uh, in a few seconds from now to show you uh, the video picture of Mission Control during Rendezvous. I'm assuming that we will not uh, have any audio again. Uh, may, perhaps we will. My assistant Sanford Sokolow is nodding frantically here that we will get some audio. We haven't had that before. Let's see now if we can uh, pick up those pictures from Houston taped a little while ago. This is the display board at uh, Mission Control in Houston. They're probably uh, holding on this picture for a moment until they've got uh, the other one queued up for us and ready to show. This is the way the Mission Controllers uh, there in Houston follow the flights uh, on uh, this huge display board, very similar to the one we have here at CBS. Uh, Shiraw and Stafford uh, came close enough, we're now told, from Houston to see the one-week uh, growth of whiskers, uh, or at least that's what they said. They said, uh, you guys sure have big beards. The crew of Gemini 6 was uh, supposed to have said by radio, and they added, uh, you're right in style. 
I don't know whether that was a reference to the uh, Santa Claus season or the beatnik uh, era, but uh, at any rate, they are in style for one or the other. Assumably, neither has turned gray in space, so maybe they had more reference to beatniks than to Santa Claus. Uh, there's nothing in the Gemini 7 mission to have turned uh, either Borman or Lovell gray, unless it might have been concern over their fellow astronauts on the ground on last Sunday uh, when uh, their Titan II booster ignited for one and a half seconds and then turned off. Only the astronauts and the technicians at Houston and the Cape know how uh, dangerous so that situation could be, and it's quite certain that Borman and Lovells uh, had uh, a serious uh, few minutes of concern until they learned that uh, the, the pressure was dropping in the tanks and that was all, all was well with that Titan II on pad 19 and with Shira and Stafford upstairs. CBS News color coverage of Gemini 6 and Gemini 7 will continue in a moment after a pause for station identification. And this is Walter Cronkite back at our CBS News Space Center where we've been reporting the rendezvous of Gemini 6 and 7. They're out of touch with ground control stations right now as they are over the wilds of Brazil, the Amazon itself. They uh, are flying within six or seven feet of each other, or at least they were at our last contact some uh, 10 minutes ago. They uh, will be now, we assume, performing maneuvers scheduled for them with Gemini 6 flying around Gemini 7, an in-plane maneuver, that is, without uh, going out of orbit, and then a little later, an out-of-plane maneuver. And that will uh, just about complete their four hours of rendezvous. About seven o'clock this evening, four, four and a half hours after they started, it is scheduled for them to uh, then uh, begin to slowly pull apart and for Gemini 6 to prepare to return to uh, Earth tomorrow morning. Around 10.26 is the scheduled uh, splashdown time. A moment ago, before our last uh, commercial break, we promised you some pictures of mission control, and we're still waiting for those. Uh, it is the tape report of their, uh, the moment of rendezvous as uh, those flight directors down there jumped up from their seats and uh, congratulated each other according to the verbal report we had from Paul Haney a little while ago. NASA is holding up that videotape for unexplained reasons after telling us it was coming up. We expect to hear from them uh, very shortly. We've now got a really a big mark uh, of the success on the escutcheon of American space travel, one that uh, this whole nation and I'm sure the free world uh, was rooting us on toward. If there is any question about uh, supremacy of one of the uh, space competing nations over the other, it would certainly seem that the United States took the long leap forward and is ahead as of today. This, uh, this is something that the Soviets have not done. They have not come, in any, come anywhere near a rendezvous of this nature. The nearest they have come is about three miles for a few split seconds uh, of two uh, spacecraft on a ballistic missile course that is uncontrolled spacecraft. Here, two spacecraft were flown even as aircraft is flown. The environment of space that had once been called hostile seems no longer to be. The four spacemen uh, up there today, and that's more than any nation has ever had up at one time, uh, in these two spacecraft are functioning as pilots, flying spacecraft even as they uh, go and bringing them within a few feet of each other. We're now told that we do have those pictures of uh, Gemini Control at the Houston Manned Space Center, and we can show them to you now. Roger, copy. Ohms remaining, five zero percent. Gemini 6, all right. Standing by, Hawaii. 
flying. quite the scene that uh, Mission Control had promised to us. They'd promised the moment of rendezvous when those flags you saw on their little stands uh, on the consoles, the flight directors were broken out. Uh, that film was a little bit later. Uh, that the moment that uh, you saw some of these people wandering around in there, well, most of the time they're sitting right at those consoles. And at the moment that rendezvous was achieved and confirmed that they were 100 feet in and going in closer, uh, like other great moments uh, for all of us at football games or at any other great event, the men uh, behind these consoles stood up and a cheer went up and they broke out these American flags that they'd all been storing away. Uh, it uh, was an unprecedented event in mission control. Last time any of us remember anything like that happening was on our very first manned space flight when Alan Shepard made his suborbital 15-minute flight down the Atlantic a missile range. Wally Shira were now advised when uh, told that, uh, or when congratulated by uh, the ground control station, says that sure was a big deal, talking about uh, the first moments of rendezvous. We have had no confirmation, as we say, that they've started their maneuvers up there, the in-plane and out-of-plane fly-arounds, but it is assumed by uh, all concerned that they have. Today's success, as I was suggesting a moment ago, gives the United States a major first in the space race because this business of rendezvous is such uh, a an major and important part of getting to the moon and back. The Soviets uh, brought to space, uh, two spacecraft uh, together, as I said, in 1962, again another few miles apart in 1963, but this was not in any sense a real rendezvous.